Welcome to hydrates. We've actually examined the concept of a hydrated salt or hydrates in an earlier lesson. But in this lesson, we're going to focus on the different types of hydrates. Here we have an example of a hydrate. It's copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. That means there are five water molecules contained in this crystal structure of copper 2 sulfate. So you can see that the copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate is being heated. And as it loses water from the heating, it becomes copper 2 sulfate and five water molecules released as vapor. Now the copper 2 sulfate that you can see has changed color is referred to as the anhydrous salt, meaning the water has been removed from this salt. Now as you can see in the video, if I add water back to this anhydrous salt, I can reverse this process and get the original hydrate over here restored and you can see the color comes back to it. So these five H2O's that are part of the hydrate, this is called the water of hydration. So when you recombine the water of hydration with the anhydrous salt, you can restore the hydrate back to its original state. Now there are two main types of hydrates we can talk about. The first type are efflorescent hydrates and the second is a hygroscopic hydrate. And these two terms come about based on the salt's ability to hold water. In an efflorescent salt, the forces holding the water molecules in are very weak. And what that means is that on a dry day, a dry atmosphere, or low humidity, these efflorescent salts can release their water into the atmosphere. And we call that efflorescing. and they're able to do that because they already have a very weak hold on the water molecules contained in the hydrate. As you might imagine, hygroscopic is the opposite. In hygroscopic compounds, water is held onto very tightly. The forces holding the water molecules are very strong. So strong that they're able to spontaneously absorb water from the outside air. This is useful because hygroscopic compounds can be used as drying agents. They can be used to dry the air for an experiment that can't have any humidity, or they can be used to dry their surrounding environment because they spontaneously absorb water. In fact, some extremely hygroscopic compounds are given a different name. They're called deliquescent. And deliquescent compounds are so hygroscopic that when they absorb water out of the air, they absorb so much water that they actually dissolve themselves and become a solution. So they absorb enough water to dissolve themselves. That wraps up our lesson on hydrates. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them to class.